Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the VG Pierce. I'll be coming at you with a gameplay review of Sovereignty Crown of Kings. And it's going to be developed by the people of Gothic Labs and the Lord's Game Studio. So this is going to be a strategy conquest game where you're going to assume the leadership of one of the lands of sovereignty and guide your people to glory and prosperity. So just know that if you're thinking about picking this game up, this is still going to be unfinished at the time of release. This does have a lot of promise to it and is this game still playable yes it is and so just know that before you are going to pick this game up that there's still a lot more work that needs to be done to this but we're going to go ahead and talk about what's great about this game and what will be great about this game in the coming days and we're going to jump into the new game here so as you can see there there's only going to be one default world to choose from and the reason being is because there is a campaign story that's going on throughout this whole map such as the elves, they kind of want to group up together and do better than the human civilizations that's out there. Vesoy, what they want to do is they want to get these little altars out there, the monuments and things like that, to actually do well in their campaign. And here, you know, they want to be the naval power and all this other good stuff. Here's going to be the orc lands right over there. So definitely loads of different factions to play from, lots of different campaign modes. And these are going to be all of the different nations, 35 factions of which to differently play in uh, any mode that you want. And we're going to just choose here the Vasoi. And as you can see there, these campaign modes are going to be the main way in which you're going to be playing it. And uh, here is where it gets kind of fun. You can choose to where this is going to be an objective based win in which all you need to do is own the province of Bresig, Zegar, Duskad, and Gotmar, and then capture the totems and call the horde. Not only that, but Jotlin and Icefire must also survive when you're doing it. And uh, you look at this and you say, what in the world? What are these objectives? Now, unfortunately, it doesn't light up. It doesn't help you out in saying, okay, this is what you exactly need to do. You gotta go and look at the map real quick and go, oh, okay, this is where Bresic is, and this is where Zagar is right there, and right over here, I think it's Gotmar. So, as you can see, there's the totems right there, right on top of that, as denoted by this little stand with a circle on top of it. So, that kind of helps you out in a way in which you need to complete your objectives. And let's go back to Vasoi again. But you can just forego that and just say, okay, I'm going to own at least 200 provinces to win this game. Or Last Man Standing, where you have to defeat everybody else. And this is the same for every one of these civilizations. And also power games, this is also going to be something that all of the civilizations will have access to. Be it first geographic power, land power, sea power, and so on and so forth. And this is going to be another mode here that won't be as long as a conquest mode or even last man standing. Rivalry mode, which you only need to defeat usually one empire. And here you need to defeat the Beruvian Empire. So as Vasoy, and so as you can see there, Beruvian Empire, they aren't small. They are very big and they are going to be down south. So pretty much you need to go and cut your way through all these other little countries and take out the Beruvian Empire. So... Definitely, if you are going to be starting out in this game, you really want to go for either the object objective-based missions or the rivalry mission because these are going to be a lot shorter than doing the conquest mode or last man standing. And power games, eh, you know, that's not my thing, but if you think that's something for you, then definitely worth it. The greatest thing about this game, though, is the history of each of the little countries. When you hit I right there, you're going to see, okay, look, Vesoy, it's a rogue realm does not follow the code of war. You can evade without warring. And that's not the same for everybody. The alignment here is going to be neutral. The race is human. They're militarist, militaristic aggressive. So you're going to have units in which you can attack a little bit better than a militaristic defensive. You can have one agent and that does mean that you can only trade one nation at a time. And you do have four heroes as well. And so talking about this, this does mean that you're going to be a stable nation. So this is this kind of really de denotes how easy or how hard it is. Five stars is a little bit more easy, and a one star is a lot more difficult to kind of play through. But by no means is it untenable. The battles and the overall gameplay is not that difficult at the time, at this time. Landmark here, Totem of the Bear. If Jotlin or Vesoy player controls all four totems, he automatically calls the Horde the Lok Vesoy. And uh, Landmark Totem Wolf. 
and then Vestoids at War. So these are going to be all the extra little things you can get. So even if you were playing Conquest mode, stuff like that, then these things are still going to happen for you. You'll be able to get the... He'll automatically call the Horde, and then you will complete this landmark totem of the Wolf there. And here, Vestoid at War. Great Barbarian tribes range across the open plains, raid for sport and training, and claim the totems and raise the horde. So that's a really cool thing about this. So you call the horde, and that's going to really help you out in taking out the Peruvian Empire, which is really huge there in the south. And there's going to be a little bit more background and history for the Vestoid people. And there's... Not just going to be humans there, as I said before, there are orc civilization, there is going to be a high elf, they even have a dark elf right there, or night elf actually, where their alignment's going to be evil, they're magical aggressive, start off with three ages and three heroes, but you only get this one little piece of land right there, as you can see, Cyrusel. The really fun part about this game is not only is it going to be the different races, but also loads of different troops to choose from. I mean, lots of different key units that you can have, unique units as well. So sometimes if you get them killed or even captured, sure, you can make one to get in replacement. But if they're captured or something like that, then you won't be able to get them in replacement because they're captured, right? And you already have one out. So here, Dragon Hold. Here is going to be a good empire, defensive militaristic, that is what I'm talking about. So if anybody attacks you, then it's good luck to those guys, but you can still definitely attack. And uh, here we can see over here the Valgorian Palatinate, and this is going to be a race that's computer controlled only. And the reason being is that if anybody attacks them, then uh, that means that everybody who is going to be good will de declare war on you so that's going to be very interesting <laughs> extremely interesting that this is going to be a computer controlled only territory so pretty cool stuff there and, and like it's like ai realm it even says it right here and the mermont there the human they even got the dwarves over here Corvalad, and actually I did play these guys there and played rivalry mode, so all I need to do is kill Kraken Waste here to the west of me right there. I had to go through Dunmar, but I only just took out this little province right here, declared peace with them, and then just attacked the bejesus out of Kraken Waste, and then just took him over, and then after that they just their, their entire empire just fell down to my might. So let's go ahead and jump into this game, like I said. And uh, let's go ahead and just check out the Vasoy. We're not going to play this for long, but definitely I'm just going to show you some of this gameplay. Let's hit that play button. You can do Iron, Iron Man mode, and I definitely recommend that mode, though, because this game, not too difficult. I'll tell you that much. So on the map here, you'll have these little circles there, and these denote your little armies. The bigger the circle, the more army units that are going to be in the circle. At first, the... UI is going to be a little bit dastardly, it's going to be a little bit unwieldy, but after a while you will get used to it. You left click it and you right click to cancel here, and you can't use the middle button to scroll around the map. You actually have to grab it with your left clicker here and move everything around. So, on your territory itself, this is actually more or less focused on the conquest. More or less focused on attack and defense of your provinces. Not necessarily about building up your provinces here as you can see there in this particular territory i can only build one building and as you can see only what eight buildings to choose from at the moment and they're pretty much going to be the same for a lot of provinces some of them here and there won't have extra ones there this one's got 10 buildings to choose from but this is not about okay slowly building up and getting your army out this is all about getting your armies out Almost kind of quickly getting into a lot of battles into a lot of fights and Trying to take over as much as possible or trying to defend as much as possible So here you can get the Raiders camp or standing stones that will get you three research points per turn And there's other stuff here farm that will help you produce more gold while unoccupied. So pretty good stuff here and uh, Here's gonna be the buttons that's gonna matter the most and we were talking about a little bit of research points and at this moment, the investment is zero, and the total is going to be 28 for the research points. But I can put more investment and actually up this a little bit. 
And look at this, it's actually cost a lot and 4 RP is going to cost 172 gold points per round to get the research points up. But with me having a large province like this or a large territory then I'll probably make a lot of gold per month. Now that is going to be one of the downfalls here. It's, there's not exactly an economy button that really tells you what's going on here. I mean, it, there is going to be a world power ranking right here. So the top five are going to be there primarily at the top. And then the powers are going to be next. As you can see there, Vasoy is currently the seventh place. And we need to topple the Peruvian Empire, who is not just number one, but basically double the score of the number two spot at the moment. So it's going to be a little bit difficult in the long run. But again, we're going to be... Just talking about everything here. These are going to be the resources that you have. And honestly, I, I, mean, I, don't, I, I mean, just where is the screen that tells me what my income is at the moment? I, I just don't know. But first, let's go ahead and continue to talk a little bit more about these buttons there. So I am going to put my research up here. I'm just going to put 12 there, 516 GP. And right here, units that are going to be in training. So every time your units are going to be done training, then they'll end up here. And then after that, you'll be able to put them out to any of the any of the units that are currently there up to a maximum of 20 so right here I cannot put any more units in this army because it's already going to be maxed out at the 20 and uh, let's see here let's go ahead and purchase the units right here is going to be the really cool part there the warriors as you can see here this is what it costs to purchase it this is going to be their upkeep per turn and uh, this will be the time it takes for them to deploy. These are going to be the top three things you need to look at when you're about to purchase them. But moreover, you really need to look at how well they attack, how well they defend, if they have any missile range attacks, you know, how, how far they can hit if they are going to be missile range, how far they can move. So this one's for movement and uh, their initiative, which is really important because when they attack one another, especially in melee range, then whoever has the higher initiative will attack first and then the other guy attacks. And that's really important in a battle, right? I mean, if you get to attack first, you whittle down their numbers and then after that, they'll be able to attack you, but at the lower strength. And here, this is going to be their discipline. So their unit's ability to stand in the face of danger. If they have low discipline, then they'll become demoralized a lot faster and here, will they'll be able to heal if they spend one turn out of battle then they'll be able to heal you can get a champion unit which is also pretty cool as you can see he's got four attack and one defense four missile and his range is two four movement and four initiative so he's really fast this guy is a really good unit however this is going to be the key as you can see from the warriors it just costed gold to pick these guys up and then an upkeep but not only does these guys cost gold and an upkeep but also it does cost three beer and also one iron to produce these guys. And that is the really cool thing about this game is that these resources are not plentiful. Sure, they'll be able to build up maybe each round if you have a territory that produces it. But if you don't, then you definitely need to either go and capture a resource node or you have to trade for it. Which trading is not a thing that they like to do. This is going to be the marketplace where... The AI control players will be putting out the resources. If they sell it just by itself, then they get a small amount of money. 79 resource or 79 to sell the resource and get that amount of money there. But to buy one is 299. So not cheap for these things here. And here is going to be the different types of units there. You get an irregular unit, berserkers, and shapeshifters. So these are the guys that can't really be classified. They may be melee units. They might be cavalry units. They might be missile range units. Who knows, right? But as you can see there, a shapeshifter? What's that? So the, the cool thing is that but they're vulnerable to taking damage from spells. But they're hit and run units. So when they attack, then they can move away. That's the really cool thing. Or the Berserker here. They get plus one attack while below 90% health. So the lower in HP they are, the harder they hit. But obviously, you, you kind of don't want that in a way. And these are going to be the Cavalry units. And then this is going to be the Cavalry Missile Range units. So these guys have some pretty good units, actually. You got the Bowman there with two range. 390. So these guys there. Witch here. So as you can see, she does cost one craft to raise. And I actually already have a craft. So we're talking about our income in just a second here let's go ahead and just start off a trade because i i kind of i kind of don't necessarily know how to look at my income without looking at the trade so 
I went to the trade window. I'm not really trading, but this is what what I have at the moment. 4,000 gold, and I make 3,400 gold per turn at the moment. And I make one craft per turn, and one horse per turn, and also one wool per turn. So that's going to be really cool to know. Uh, we'll go back to the screen at the moment after a little bit and as you see here these are going to be the resources here that i'll have crafts horses and wool and i do make these here it says so right there incoming and then outgoing and if i have some in stock and if i sell them this is how much it sells for and then if i want to purchase it it's 79 to purchase it or actually sell it and then 299 to purchase it sorry about that and then uh, again when you're looking at your units here like let's say i want to get these champions well i don't create beer nor do I create iron for my units. So what I have to do here is I need to find somebody with beer. Okay, let's go ahead and get to the beer. And after that, let's go to this little trade icon. And as you can see here, there's four countries that actually produces beer. It's going to be Jotland, Arcel, Kelland, and Hadrigal. So here I can actually change the map and I can see. Now when you're trading with other territories, it does matter how far away they are because that will take extra time for your guys to trade with them to go and come back for you to use them here I only have one agent so I can only send them on one trade mission at a time and if they are gone for a long time then I won't be seeing any extra materials come my way anytime soon so here I'm looking for three beers which I don't think anyone's gonna have offhand but let's go ahead and check the guys that are closest to me I believe Hadrigal is close also Aerosol is close too Jotlin's right next to me as well so let's go ahead and check out Jotlin and really look he's making one beer per turn he might think about trading with me for a few turns so let's see if he's gonna be game for that and here's gonna be another bad thing I can't input my numbers look I can't I, I'm hitting my number keys and I can't change my numbers I'm only changing the stuff in the background there <laughs> and I can only press this up arrow but one beer per turn let's offer him like 822 gold per turn Let's see here what the offer is. He looks over trade. This appears to be weighted in our favor. Oops, we don't want to do that. That's way too much money for the time being. But what I want to do is I want to get three beer per turn. He's barely containing his pleasure. Oops, that's that's still too much money. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and just do 262. This is an insult. Now, the more times you go and try to offer him something, the higher the offer will need to be to satisfy him. So as you can see there, he's starting to get insulted. Oops. Okay, not acceptable. So before I kind of offered 400 and he was ecstatic. He looks over the trade. This offer is very reasonable. He looks happy and he suspects he might take a lesser offer. But if I cancel it and try to give him something lower, then maybe like 375 might not be good enough. But I'm going to do it anyways because I don't want to spend that much money. Let's go 370. Oh, see, he, he didn't like that. Let's go to 380. Okay, so now he'll accept that. Let's go ahead and confirm the trade. So now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna wait three turns, get what I need, and then after that, stop spending the money on this trade and uh, cancel that if I can. But again, when I go and put my guy out, look, he's gonna be gone for two turns here, and then after that, he'll be done with that. Okay. Well, it looks like the trade hasn't gone through yet. You don't get the trades right away. It does take some time for them to get over there. I will say another thing, too, is that, look, I press the escape button, and this is what happens. It takes the meat to the menu, and that's it. You would think that, you know, you press escape, and it will get out of this menu, but no. So the UI is a little bit wonky, but you can get over it a little bit. All right, so we talked about the great powers. Now, this is going to be the prisoners tab, which I don't have any, and if I have any active spells, then this one's going to be where it displays, and these are going to be my objectives here. So you can get new objectives during the time you are playing this game. And uh, if you just do the main objective, usually that's good enough. But sometimes extra objectives pop up out of nowhere for you. And I kind of hate that in a way, but I mean, I get it. Sometimes the objectives seem a little bit too easy and you're like, hmm. And then you just get it and then they pop up new ones. So like, ah, okay, that, that, there we go. That's the difference here. So conquer 15 provinces and then you get a new type of unit. So this is going to be a little cool thing that you can have. Complete this objective will unlock a new unit. Awesome. And uh, that's pretty cool. So they do have some pretty cool stuff here to be had. All right, let's go ahead and just get into a little bit of a battle here. And 
see what that's like while I am still going to be on the air. Let's move my 20 unit army a little bit closer here. I'm going to attack these bastards here to the south because they're bastards. And let's go ahead and recruit a couple of guys there. This takes two turns. There's one turn here. And I won't be able to get these guys for the next bit, but that's okay. We have wool there. Let's go ahead and get these planes riders. And let's go ahead and... The switch is okay here. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab a witch. We'll just grab maybe a few archers there. And we'll grab a few warriors like this. Because I'm about to get really naughty on the AI there. And then after that, once you queue it up, they're already queued. You already spent the money. You can't just go, oh, I accidentally did it. Exit out. You already spent the money. Too bad. You might as well just continue with it. And that's it. But like I said, there's no economy thing saying, hey, you just spent this much. And uh, your next income will be this now. So, again, just a huge downfall right there. I mean, I just don't know what I'm spending, what's incoming, what's outgoing at the moment. I just kind of have to just fly by the seat of my pants or just look at the trade window and see what I'll be getting here. New trade offer. Look, now gold per turn, 2300 per turn. And this is how much money I have at the moment, 1500. So, that's the easiest way that I can see to check my economy. I'm still making some pretty good money, 2400 per turn, I'll take it. And let's see if I, actually I think I spent everything there, but let's go ahead and see if I can get anything else. That's it, right? So I'm getting beer so I can make one of those units. I finished here, I can't trade with anything else because I only got one agent. So let's go ahead and end the turn and go to the next bit. So if I was a good territory, now when I attack somebody and declare war, I will have to wait one turn. But I am a neutral territory and I can just attack at will. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I can spy this territory and see what their army is. As you can see, barely right there, as you can see, they do have an army right here. So let's go ahead and just attack them just to see what it's like. Can I attack yet? Oh, okay. I got to wait until turn three to attack. So, okay. That's fine. I'll just go ahead and recruit a few more units. I have three units in waitings at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three and place them in there and then after that I am going to I'm probably going to purchase a few more let's get three more warriors after that and then we're going to end turn yet again to get to turn three rivalry the time has come we will go to war with Palmore all right so we are going to get a hero he's going to be a taskmaster and the nice thing is that you're going to get heroes for this game, but the bad thing is that the hero only does one either spell or some type of skill, and that's about it. All units you control have minus one discipline for the remainder of this battle. Your opponent skips his turn. So that's really good there. Let's go ahead and get that in there. You get to assign it to whoever, but I do notice that the heroes kind of pop up and take over at however many units you have. But that's not always the case, though. But... It does seem like that. So let's go ahead and do it. Attack province. You certainly want to wish to attack Tullwith. And I believe Palmore is the people that I am in having a beef with. Yes, it is. So this is going to be the little button that tells me my relationship view. And this just tells me my political view. So, and this right here at the bottom left tells you how the relationship is at the moment. As you can see, it's red. So the Peruvian Empire, not happy with me, as well as Palmore. So they're my enemies at the moment. And so... All enemies must die, and uh, therefore we will attack. All right, so you can do an auto attack there, or a tactical attack. So for the time being, I'm just going to show you real quickly what a auto attack is. We're just going to auto attack like this, and then after that, the first stage of combat will deploy, and this is going to be any missile range units will attack. And let's go ahead and take a look. So my missile range units fire only one, and that's it. <laughs> Next. Round of combat is going to be any skirmishes that might happen. And it looks like my guys aren't doing too well at the moment. <laughs> Uh-oh, looks like... And these auto battles, you definitely don't want to do auto battles too much because you guys will end up, like I said, it's almost like they're just face-to-face. -face, but at least you don't have to worry about getting into a tactical environment or anything like that. It looks like my guys are totally losing. We're just kind of weakening them up at the moment. The nice thing about taking off these elves is that it takes them a lot longer to actually get their guys back but 
They do have a couple of units there with Fearsome, and so it's a little bit more difficult to take them down. They fear your guys, and so they won't be able to attack as much. Now, this is going to be the All Out War Grand Melee, and so all of my guys will attack all of their guys, and then their guys will all out attack me. And so let's go ahead and do it and see how it turns out. I can speed it up if I want to right there. But I, you really want to just take your time and take a look at it and see how the battle's going before you skip anything, especially in the first round. But it looks like we're doing okay-ish, I'd say. We might actually win. Let's go ahead and skip it. And as you see there, it finished all there. And Palmore defeats the Vesoy at Tow Wave. So here we took about almost equal amount of casualties there. And that kind of sucked, but that's okay. I do have a few more units there to come in. So we can move in and get my guys on it. I do have Witch and Bowmans here with more Warriors. So let's go ahead and get these guys in. As you can see, I have a whole lot more space. So let's go ahead and get these guys in there. I'll be able to get my guys over here. I got another horse unit there. And let's get this guy in there. Let's get these people over here. No, he's, they're going to be short. They're going to be short. So my next turn... I'll be able to attack with this little bit there, and that is it. Anybody deploying to it won't be able to join in on the fight. I did lose a bunch of units there, as you can see, but now I get now I have beard because I've been getting it one per turn, so I can get Olrov Raiders now, as you can see. It's really cheap to get, and the upkeep is about normal, but boy, the initial cost is pretty low. The heal is pretty nice as well. But let's go ahead and uh, Let's see, what, what was I waiting on to get my stuff for the champion? So, I'm not going to spend any beer. I'll need to get iron soon, but we're not going to spend any beer because I want to get these champions out. And then after that, let's go ahead and recruit this up like that. We're going to get some... Oh man, I want to get these all rough. But single shot raiders, it's not really my style. So I'm going to skip them. And as you see here, this is pretty much the game. You pretty much spam your units and spam how many guys you want like that and then after that you end turn really not much like i said there's really not much of the territory cultivating at all you need certain things for it to do well right so let's go ahead raiders camp here if attacking for this province the owner's unit gains two times gold when raiding victory objectives in the tactical battle so let's go ahead and grab that up i'll have that building so they're attacking me right there but what we're going to do, though, is we're going to attack here in Palmore. Right here, they need five turns there to actually get this territory. So, no rush there. He's actually splitting his forces. So, let's go ahead and go back in there and attack. So, this time, we're going to go into a tactical battle. And we're going to check out how it is doing this battle. All right. So, in the beginning, I can arrange my units. So, definitely, I'm going to put all my melee units in front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mounted units all over the top so that they can go run around and jug people. We're going to put my witch right behind the witch elf, the bowman right behind the warriors, like that. And we do have a shaman. Let's put the shaman over there. I do have a shapeshifter. That's kind of cool. And then after that, we are going to just move in. Like, we're going to put the shapeshifter over here. I don't know what he does, but he's pretty cool. He's, got, he's an illusion, hit and run, and he's resilient, so that's good. Let's go ahead and put my two knight units there or cavalry units and these are going to be the objectives here that i need to take over so they're going to be flagged there and there's going to be these little stars that need to take over i need to take over these stars before the rounds are going to be up let's go ahead and finish up battle phase you win the battle by defeating all the defender units by capturing all the victory points or forcing the defender to retreat so obviously the easiest way is to just capture these points there they got three units here and then four units over there and that is exactly what I want to do. Let's go ahead and move in there. And the really cool thing is that territory matters. See, this is a swamp, so the move cost is 1.5. And then here's terrains that are planes that are just going to be movement cost 1. So there's going to be some things that you have to think about when you are playing this game. But for the time being, let's go ahead and just march our units. Let's go, guys! Onward! Get my boom in up here. Yeah! And then after that, we're going to end the turn. And there we go. That is it. They will create a shield wall, and they're going to be waiting for my guys to come. All right, they're waiting for us, guys. Let's not disappoint them. This is my shape shift is really fast there. 
Alright, move my guys like that. Oh man, my guys are going slow because of all this damn swamp. And yeah, we're healing people. That's cool. Alright. That was a little bit of an accident. But hey, that works out. Alright, these guys might think about coming forward there. Let's get my shapeshifter up there. He's resilient. He'll be okay. Alright, anything to the blue is where I can move. And uh, blue and orange is one spot. You can always move one. Ooh, this guy can move a whole bunch. Let's go that way. Yeah, look at that. Alright, heal them up. There we go. Like so. Oh, shape shift there. Look at that. They're moving away. They're moving away, guys. The skid! The skid! Let's go up there and move here. Oh man, this guy's moving so fast. Alright, look at that. So, such a difference when we're on planes here. Such a difference. Look at that. Let's go ahead and continue to stay on these planes, huh? Huh? Oops, I missed. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. We're going to be moving in as a line, as one for the time being. Shifter. Let's get him. Alright, we're able to move down like that. Let's go ahead and move my guys like that. Slowly but surely. Like so. Alright, alright. Move it in, guys. Move it in. We don't want to get too separated now. Shield wall does give me some defensive advantages, right? I got the sword right there. That's okay. Get him! Alright, we're just going to wait for my guys now because this is not cool. This is not cool. Bow and arrow, guys. Which... Here, oh, I took over that spot. That's okay. Move this way. Get these guys over here. Oh, I already moved these guys. Alright. And we're going to hang back from the shapeshifter for now. And it looks like they're running away. Actually, they're retreating. So it looks like they're retreating. We'll get my shapeshifter over here. We'll get my guy down there. Like that. Chase after the scared bastards. Where are you going? Where are you going? I thought you wanted to play, guys. I thought we were playing some sovereignty. All right. I don't want to be walking in there with my cavalry like like crazy people. I'm going to move in like so. I'm going to take that over. Now, when I do take this little part off, as you can see there, real briefly, I took 17 gold when I raided the the spot so that's pretty nice right there that you get gold for doing what you probably would have been doing anyways let's go ahead and get across this little river river runs through it guys and then we're just going to continue on and head towards the other little objective of these two guys and then these guys are just running so not really much of a fight so far <laughs> But you guys kind of get the gist of it, right? Let's move ahead, move ahead on. The swamp is kicking my butt at the moment. And Mia's retreated, so what they'll do is they'll just jump on each other and attack. And as you can see, they just kind of moved away. So now my guys are right there. They actually retreated into my own province there, but that's okay. We're going to go and jump on their faces, okay? And this time they will attack me back. And... Uh, we will just do, you know, sit there attacking me, and we didn't really get to see that last time. We're just going to go in, into the tactical battle, like so. And this is going to be the deploy stage, so let's go ahead and just keep my guys close together as pos much as possible here. And I, I, I get the place first, but we are just going to... Okay, it's in the blue spots there, so let's go ahead and just make my guys here as close as possible. Let's get my cavalry unit over here. Get the cavalry units right over there. Put these guys over there. Like a so. Me melee units. And then we'll put my shapeshifters over there. Alright. Okay, it looks like they came from the south. And so I made, a, I made a big error. But that's okay. So we're going to move over here. And as you can see there, when I do attack... Casualties 2 to 14 and no casualties. Let's go ahead and do that. I like that. I like having no casualties. Let's go ahead and move him closer for so the 
shield wall will activate. Move my guy over here. Looks like looks like we made a little bit of an error here. I thought they were gonna come from the north like I did, but I forgot that they will come in the direction that they had been deployed from. So so oops! But hey, it's okay. It's okay. I do have superior forces. And we will go and attack them. Alright, let's go ahead and attack these fools. Nice thing though is that you can attack and move. Hey, you don't get that every day. Alright, so let's go ahead and attack them. People, zero on that attack. Move my guys forward here. Forward, people! We'll keep my guy right there. Oops. No, it's, it's okay. We're gonna walk to my walk to my guys. Oh, they're broken here. Coldness skeletons. All right, these guys are a little bit hurt. Let's go back here, remove her, and then heal them. There we go. And what we're gonna do is we're going to just get, we're just gonna shoot them. We're gonna get close enough and shoot them. Like that. And he's got, what is this, two range attack, and so I just need to get right here and attack him like that. Let's weaken him up, okay? Just gotta weaken him up. Get a warriors in there. 23 casualties, 12 to 14, but I do get 0 to 180 fire support, so that's cool. 92! Oh, they just plain died, guys. Oops. Uh-oh, they're pretty strong here. Okay, let's get our werewolves over. Cover that spot there. Alright, good stuff. Hit them back. Get them back across the uh, the ocean. Shield ball, baby. Oh, I can't believe it. These guys are really tough. Okay. We're going to continue to work on that stupid guy here. The cold mist skeletons. They already got a tower shield going. Let's move back. Let's continue to heal my, my guys there. We have shaman units there. Alright, let's go ahead and move here and continue to attack. Oh no! The Lich! Oh, the Lich is what's really kicking my butt. Let's go kill him. Let's go and kill that guy. That's the Lich that's actually kicking my butt. Alright, let's go here. Move my guys over there. Alright, get him! Get him! Man, I might be doing bad on this tactical battle. <laughs> I think I was doing better when I was doing the auto attack, eh? Let's go ahead and get that in there. There we go, there we go. Holding back these fiends there. Oh my gosh, these guys are so strong. Alright, let's go ahead and attack them. Broken. This lick is so strong, what's going on? Alright, I don't care anymore. Let's go ahead and... We're gonna get in there with our guys and attack. Sacrifice body and limb here to stop them. Ah! Don't you dare back down from this fight! Uh oh. And I think we are losing. We do have a guy here. All units you control have minus one discipline, but my opponent skips their next turn. Let's do it. Play it! Sweet! Okay, so I get extra turns here. That's gonna really work out well. So I'm gonna take him out. I'm gonna go take him out. Like that. Awesome. Okay, like that. Good. We'll heal him up. And let's go and take this guy out. Like that. I wouldn't normally move with my guy, but since I get a free turn, I hope, then I should be okay. Okay, yeah, I do. Great. So I'm going to attack and walk back. Attack. Nice. Get my werewolves in there. Okay, good. Take out these skellies. Heal them up. Heal them up. Move back, man. Okay. Oh, maybe I should move these guys up, huh? All the battles happening, but they they will come around. So I don't want that to happen. But maybe splitting them up is a good idea at this point. We got zombies or 
Take out the coldness skeletons. Take out the coldness skeletons. There we go. Very good, my boy. Very good. And let's see here. They still got this lich. Or is it lich or lick? I think it's lick, right? Let's see here. Let's go ahead and heal my boys up here. And we'll melee attack this fool. Okay, let's go ahead and move up. Susceptible to melee attacks. That's their downfall. Surround that lick. Kill him. He's not licking anyone. Uh, right. Enemies retreated. Woo! I did terrible on that tactical combat, guys. <laughs> Don't pay attention to my bad maneuvers. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So delivering a humiliating t defeat. And uh, that is pretty much it, guys. So... Hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Definitely, this game has a lot of good promises, a lot of good premises. It's still going to be unfinished. There's still some things that are going to be missing from the game. There's actually still a few bugs that I've noticed as well. And so, I just I just don't... I mean, like, definitely, you want to take this game in, in and make it your own. But just beware for the time being. And so, with that, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is the VG Pierce. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Like my videos and hopefully I'll see you guys next time.